someone buys, an investor group buys a hotel chain, 34 hotels, and they want to get inside this. They want to say, we're going to fix everything. We're going to make this place great. We're going to win awards. What do we do first? So you are all now consultants, and they brought you in to do this. What do you do? Stay there, good, okay, then what? Stay there. So you, you see a few things. You're, you know, a, a mystery shopper. Anybody else? Talk to guests. Talk to guests. <coughs> good. So you're doing research. We're doing lots of research. We all agree on that. What else? Trip advisor. Sorry? Trip advisor. Trip advisor, reviews, got it. Look at the numbers. We see where they're, they're, they're losing money or, or making profits. Let's step back even further. You're the CEO of 34 hotels that you just bought at a good price. So you bought them at a good price. So they're underperforming, right? Maybe they're a little tired in the tooth. Maybe they have three floors that are under reconstruction, and remodeling. Step back here for a minute and say, okay, I want to do this research. So I'm doing TripAdvisor, I'm calling people, I'm, I'm interviewing, I'm staying there. But what am I missing? You've got, you've got a raw lump of clay right in front of you called 34 hotels. What's inside those hotels? But let's step way, way back, everyone. Okay. Empty rooms, what else? People. people. People are in those hotels. What kind of people? All kinds. Okay. All kinds. OK, those are your guests. What other people are walking the halls? Okay. Staff. Did I hear someone say staff? Yeah. OK. Staff. You've got all these employees. Who do you think knows more about this hotel, the general manager or the maintenance guys or the cleaning crew? Who knows more about this hotel? The lowest level employee. I'm sorry? The lowest, lowest level, employee. right, there you go. They know where the skeletons are buried. Half of them buried them there. But they know what's wrong. They know what equipment isn't necessary, equipment that can be repurposed, things that can be canceled, things that need to be acquired, what needs to be painted, where that crack is in the, in the, the, the wall. They know every square inch. But let's take it another step. We talked about combinations, right? <coughs> Excuse me. What do we all have that we didn't have 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago? 20 years ago, we would have interviewed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of employees, 34 hotels, roughly you know, 150 employees each. I'm, I'm, I don't remember the numbers. Um, we would have had to do extensive interviews. What do we have today? Surveys, technology. So what would you do? How would you then reach these people? What do they all have? They all have computers, right? Whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, a laptop, what have you. So how do you reach them? Everyone knows what an intranet is? You'd set up an intranet, wouldn't you? So that everybody could log on. Well, why would you help me out? You know, you're on the cleaning staff. Why are you going to help me? Why are you going to tell me what's wrong with the hotel? Is, is there a psychology here at play, everyone? What did I say about affinity? What's in it for me? You now have someone who is empowered. You're, you're giving them the power. They have knowledge you want. And so their first thought is, what's in it for me? How about you do a contest? Like a lottery, every time you make a suggestion, of any kind, and you do it by department, they get on there, oh, here's a plumbing suggestion, here's electrical, here's maintenance. Every suggestion you make gives you one chance to win. And we create all these prizes that we know this class of employee, uh, you know, level, economic level, will want. Are they now incentivized? 176,000 suggestions. Boiled down to about 16,000 after duplicates, maybe 14, 14, 15,000. All by department. What is the department able to do now? Oh, wow, I had no idea. OK, I can plan. I can buy this much wire, this much cable, this much paint. Put these teams out. Schedule it. <clears throat> so what am I doing? <clears throat> I'm breaking it down to the lowest common denominator. It's the lower level employees who have the knowledge you want. And how do I get them to engage and give it to me? What's in it for them? Yes, we can do pride of ownership. We can do all the awards. We can do all of that. But the bottom line is, you as the consultant, your job is you've got 30 days to figure out everything that's wrong with this hotel chain. 
and respectfully, looking at TripAdvisor and interviewing and calling and staying there isn't going to get you where you need to go. And I use this example because <clears throat> in every business in this room and every business that you interact with, there is a, a level of expertise in that company that is never tapped. I've done a lot of work with airlines and what they, and they don't get it even when you show it to them, but um, the flight attendants, the gate agents, the maintenance workers, the baggage handlers know so much more about that airline than the, than the C-suite. But not by a factor of, of anything you can measure unless you have a supercomputer and they don't tap in. Why is there such a separation between the C-suite and the ground level? Not just an airline, but anywhere. So what if the C-suite could be convinced that the people on the ground can help them make more profit? Would they do it then? Instant. It, technology? There's my intranet. 30 days. Here's the contest. There you go. They won't do it. They, they won't do it. You know why? Because they don't see the world through the same eyes that we do, that they do. Arrogance, ego, emotional attachment, cognitive bias, um, adversarial positioning. Does that help or hurt the business? You know, I used to work with the CEOs of Fortune 1000 companies. And I don't do that anymore because as I'm getting older, I have less and less patience for slow, slower, and rigor mortis. They can't get out of their own way. They are the, the example of if we build it, they'll come, and that's the only time it works other than in the movies, because they are so big, they're too big to fail, which is another book you'll see. Verizon came to me with a problem. They were creating a, um, does anybody know what an OBD2 is for a car? It's, a, it's an engine analyzer. It, it tells you where you are and how your engine's doing, and now there are apps that say, oh, red light warning, or you're low on oil, or, or you should have uh, maintenance, and you can put all kinds of information in this, and upsell, and newsletter. It's fabulous. <clears throat> so they create one, and the concept is good. They're going to sell this through their stores, through their corporate-owned stores and their franchises, and with the app and everything. All right. How many people see a problem with that? Anybody? No. You've got a great distribution channel. You have salespeople. You have a tremendous amount of market share uh, who people who walk into the stores. It's cakewalk, right? So they design this system, and they have the device that goes on, and they have a speaker that clips onto the visor of your car so you could use it as an extra speaker, <clears throat> and they're off to the races. And they're going to put millions and tens of millions of dollars into advertising. How many people think that's going to sell? You've got distribution, you've got salespeople, you've got your channels, you've got your brand recognition name, you've got an innovative technological product that gives you information on your car. <clears throat> how many people, show of hands, how many, come on, it's not a, it's not a set up question, because the fact is it's sold. How many people believe it would sell? Okay, why won't it sell, tell me. Meeting with the automakers? Nope, they don't offer it. They, in fact, do not offer this, except Tesla. So they go to that building for it. I'm sorry? I don't think it's worth the client to go to that building for it. No, it doesn't matter once they're shown this new technology of, oh, my God, you have this app. You can see everything on your car. You know when it needs to be fixed. It's, the car already does it. No, it doesn't. It's just warning lights. It doesn't give you. I don't want to know what's on it. Why else won't it sell? <clears throat> cars don't break. It doesn't happen. Well, OK. It, you know, people are going to buy technology because it's technology. And this is, by the way, a subscription service. They pay, it's added onto their phone bill. Any other reasons why it won't sell? I mentioned one thing that nobody caught on to. Well, that's, there you go. There's one part. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about two things. I said, oh, there's an external speaker you can clip onto your visor. Is that current day technology? Or would Bluetooth into your car be current technology? So right away, they're taking a 10-year step back. They don't get that because the person they hired to design this thing said, oh, just do that. It's, it's easier. <clears throat> Their costs on this would have been, had they done it right, about $40. They're spending $90. There's no education program to teach the people in the stores how to sell it and teach them how to educate the public on it. 
There's no sizzle beyond its own technology for technology's sake. You start analyzing this and looking at it and saying, this is not going to sell. Well, in fact, they sold in one month 100,000 of them. And I made a prediction, and I couldn't have been more wrong. I said, you're going to get back about 65,000 of them. They got 82,000 back. So I really missed that one. But just because Verizon comes out with something, or Google or Apple comes out with something, doesn't make it a super hit overnight, just because their name is on it. So, you know, and, and there are wonderful corporate stories. You know, um, Apple had the first um, intelligent home speaker, like Alexa and their home pod, in 2012. HP had the first tablet 10 years before the iPad. Xerox owned Windows. They owned it. Hindsight is great, because you can see all these stories. The head of digital um, computer company back in the day said, no one in their right mind would ever want a computer at home. These are people who don't question. These are people who are so, I don't want to say full of themselves, full of their environment, the environment they've surrounded them with, the insulation they've put around each other, them, themselves, the entourage, the yes men. <clears throat> you all do it. You all do it in your own universe. Not yes men and, and sycophants, I'm not talking about that. You do it because the only way you can get work done is by insulating yourself from the hard questions or looking at things uh, critically. Because it, I'm sorry? You know why? Why? You want to be comfortable. Right, exactly. It's because you're in a comfortable environment, you're moving forward, you're moving the needle, you have your daily challenges, and you convince yourself that you're doing all the right things, you're moving ahead properly, and this is the way life should be. You have convinced yourself, and that stops you. That blocks you. You need to let go of that. I, I, I don't want to be a motivational speaker, but I want to just shock you into, into action so that you start questioning things. <clears throat>